How many of you want to learn a little bit about Mistral, the free model? Anybody down? Okay, so let's talk about Mistral. Mistral is an open source model and people are really starting to get excited about it because they're a small team and they are free and open source. They just so happen to also be free cost right now. I don't know that'll be forever. Right now they are free on Open Router. And they do have a website here pushing AI forward. I have to admit, I like their color schemes. Their color schemes are very similar to the colors we use in the FFA all the time. So they're committing to open models and that they're benefiting from the open source software. That's what OSS stands for, by the way, community. I really love these vibes. It, it matters to me that they're coming from that kind of perspective. So their new section, though, their new section talks all about Mistral 7B. And last night we were working, obviously I was going into the developer section. How many of you found the documentation is not fantastic on these LLMs? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, not the greatest. But you are able to play with Mistral in your Rexy for free when you just load it. Now it does have an instruct model, which is what we do have available. And it has a chat completion. Now this is a lot, okay? It's gonna be a lot of technical jargon, but I'm gonna break it all down. So message, it's defining here. Number one, can I just say I love these people? Look at what they're using. Square bracket. <laughs> I love a good LLM model that starts to understand prompting should be using square brackets just so it doesn't com compete with other forms of punctuation that we use in coding. So we have a role and then we're defining that role with this comment or this colon here of user. So this is the user role is now going to be sending the content, which we're defining with a colon here. Now, this is a chat, an example of a chat, and God love them. They, they're giving an example that literally is not helpful to the vast majority of the population. And then here we do have the temperature and then the max tokens, and then the message comes back. Now, what was interesting is guard railing. So let's go to guard railing. So last night I was reading this documentation. Now, a guardrail, we're used to hearing it as do not write bad content. And then it usually will define bad content as like illegal activities, hateful harassing, unqualified advice. Okay, most of these are, we can all agree that it's not how we want to use the AI. However, for fiction writers, it's a problem if my villain is a terrorist, if my villain is a child abuser, if my villain has committed fraud, because the LLMs often can't tell the difference. So no worries, Mistral is not going to bar you or anything like that. It, it will write not safe for work content. It's only showing that you could have these restrictions if you wanted to. It's showing an example of how it would tell you to limit those, but we're not doing that. But one part of this is that then you can understand that this is their template for prompting. So S, we're used to these kinds of brackets here. So this is like their system. So little S for system. And notice we're using our alligator punctuation. We see that a lot in coding and we see that a lot for system. There's also, I believe it's llama formatting where we do all capitals, SYS, and we have double alligator brackets. So very similar here. Then we have our containers, our Tupperware containers that we like, these square brackets to define what is this thing here. And you'll notice that they're very similar. Great minds think alike. We have ints, I-N-S-T for instances. They're using I-N-S-T here, I think, for instruction. So instruction, system prompt plus instruction. Now they have this model answer and then they close the system. And then in, uh, an instruction, follow up instruction. Your brain's melting, just hold tight. So this doesn't make sense to a lot of people. I have found those that I've talked to. It's an informal poll. I, it's anecdotal. I've talked with this with a couple of different people. How many people this makes a whole lot of sense to and how many people it just does not? Let me know in the chat. And I already gave you guys the hint that this thing is hard-coded to be a two-stepper, okay? It's a two-stepper. And we haven't really seen this be the default prompting mechanism for other LLMs. At least I have not. If you have, let me know. And I figured it out last night from this one sentence right here. This format, singular, this format must be strictly respected. Otherwise, the model will generate suboptimal outputs. And so the first time I read that sentence, my brain went, oh, I've got a disagreement here between singular and plural. Oh, this thing is designed to give me multiple outputs. So let's go ahead and play with it. Let's grab this. I'm going to copy it. We're going to come over here to Rexy. And so my word banger, we're going to clear it all out. Because I love word banger as like my kind of like blank canvas to play with now. Y'all are making pants out of me. I'm going to come over to Open Router in my Rexy and I'm going to choose Mistral AI 7B. Now let's go ahead and bring that temperature down. 
because we know temperature controls it listening, the randomness aspect of it. And we'll leave the rest and we'll click update. Now I have the prompt. I'm going to go ahead and put it in S3 just to store it so that we have it as available. So what I'm going to do first, I'll click auto write. I'm going to just give Mistral a straight prompt. Okay. Write a full scene for a novel with a long conversation and action between a woman named Olivia, who is a hacker in a cyberpunk world, being chased by drones and bots. She is helped by someone named them who she thinks is safe. And then it turns out to be a double cross. Make sure to capture all of this. Now I'm giving it a big prompt. It's very expansive. So I'm hoping it'll misbehave. <laughs> It hasn't this morning. It was misbehaving last night, but it wasn't misbehaving this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and click Let's Bang. Now, what I'm looking for it to be messed up is that it starts writing and it's okay. And then it should start looping at the end. Like it'll write me 1,200 words, but really only 700 of them are original. And the last 500 are just a loop, almost like that record that gets scratched, that gets stuck. And here it looks like it did not create, it didn't do the, the double thing. But has anyone else found where it just loops when they played with Mistral? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show how you can use the two-stepper. So we have this here and we have that prompt. So what I'm actually going to do is write this prompt, paste that in, and then I'm going to start saving that to Notion here. Now let's put it in this format that it is designed for right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and X. So right here, instruction system prompt plus instruction. We're going to paste that right here. And then the follow-up instruction right here, let's play. I don't know that it can do that, but we'll, we'll test it out and see what it can do. So now I'm going to copy and paste this into the top box. And I'm going to press clear to clear out my middle box. So the big bang box is cleared. If I did clear all, I'd lose everything. So this is just, this is just clear, just clear, clears the main box here. And I do have auto write on. And again, I'm really demoing how we have this memory options here with these S3s. These are just for the session memory. This is, if I was to refresh Rexy right now, I would lose everything in my S slots. So I like to use S slots just for when I'm trying to like construct prompts. I just need to temporarily keep something there while I'm like orchestrating. So I'm in a state of flow as I'm working in Rexy. And now let's click, let's bang and let's see what it does. Who was after her? Can you help me? I'm being chased by drones and bots. I can't help you. You're a hacker, Olivia. You're a threat to the system. I can't let you hide here. I'm innocent. All right. So now I only got 632 words. All right. So it's still, it doesn't know anything about the characterization. It's definitely very basic writing, but this is free. These are free words <laughs> that you can get like a rough sketch with. Coming over to fall and let's take a look at the auto write because I want to compare these. So our last one, when it wrote back is we have new Avalon as the bots chased her. The city was a sprawling labyrinth. As she ran, she could feel the weight of her hacker past pressing down on her. They're after me. I'll help you, but you have to trust me. Something didn't feel right. What are you doing? I'm just doing what I have to do. Olivia, you're not the only one who's wanted by the corporations. I'm wanted too. And then it doesn't do the double cross. It, they work together. You're welcome. So it didn't fix the double cross. However, if I come over to this Rexy one, she's crawling out. I'm innocent. The woman looked, then turned and ran back into the shadows. Still didn't get quite a double crossed, but it does say it realized she had been double crossed. The woman she thought was safe turned out to be an enemy working with the drones and bots to hunt her down. This is a very minor difference between the two. And we have more work to do with these prompts and stuff like that and really push the envelope of what's capable, what's possible with Mistral. It only has a 4,096 context window. So we're working in a context window that's the size of GPT 3.5. However, they are working on sliding window. And what that means is that the way it works even right now, this is why it can be such a small model, is that there, there's an article here. I was reading this yesterday while I was getting my hair done. So attention drift, the paper that made a lot of this transformer technology possible, it's called All You Need Is Attention or All You Really Need Is Attention. It was a Google researcher and stuff like that. And that's what did this idea of a transformer. So Mistral is using a sliding window attention mechanism. This idea that you could use like smaller models and then usually you're set with this is the context window and output, and that's what you have. What I think that they're doing here is they're starting to experiment with the idea of what if we have this small thing that can only read like a thousand tokens, like the old models did, or they were really small, but it has the ability to read a thousand and then it puts out. 
hypothesis here is I think this may be similar technology to what's allowing 100,000K Claude. I don't have any proof on that other than sometimes it seems a little wonky that Claude's not able to pick up all the information when you give it 100,000 tokens. So I think there's some kind of magic on the back end where it's processing that in chunks and everything like that. And we understand this because this is what we've been doing manually, right? How many of you have been truncating your outline if you're working with tools like PseudoWrite or something where there's like a limit on how much you have because of the context window of the models you're using. We're used to this idea of we need a snapshot of this information and now we're going to move down and now we're going to move down and now we're going to move down and we're going to work in slices. It makes you feel any better. I don't really fully understand this information here, this instruction. Like I, I, I see this graphic here and I'm understanding a little bit about the window size. Okay, the layers. So I'm guessing a token I at layer K attends to tokens at layer K minus. So let's take this second orange block here, for example. Let's pretend this is the token because I think that's what these are. They're tokens. And these are the layers. So we have layer one, two, three, four. If I start up at the top, actually go the other way around, but I know that they write top down. So first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. The tokens keep going. So the idea here is that this token right here actually was influencing this token in the next layer and that token in the next layer. So I think the original stuff is that it could only read backwards and now they're trying to play with this idea of like maybe it's able to read forwards as well or it's able to read tokens further back because it's I minus two. So token I, so that's this, minus two times the sliding window and read back into the higher layers. Apologies. If this is, I don't like this, Elizabeth, make it stop. This is not easy stuff. It's written in a way for engineers and for mathematicians to understand, not for lay people to understand. We're just the ones who, who are going to be prompting this stuff. Hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It might make sense for us to be able to understand this stuff, guys. <laughs> and there are some papers here that I do plan to read this weekend so that I can understand this a little bit better. But the point is that there's possibility here. We're playing right now with a free model that is able to write better than I could see Da Vinci or Babbage or Ada or Curie write. What do you all think? Do you all think that this output is better? I would say that it's on par with probably 3.5 turbo. Yeah, we have in the FFA, we have a whole bunch of different labs on all of this stuff. Understanding context window and tokens and stuff, I think is a really critical part to the future of writing. And then we have some videos here on YouTube as well. Check out, just look at some of the older videos where I teach about context windows and tokens and things like that. All right. So what do we think, what level of ability would you put this output at? If Claude 2 and ChatGPT 4, and I would even possibly put Mythomax, are at one end of the spectrum of like really decent first draft. Then we have a layer that's less than that, that I would put my turbos, my 3.5 turbos in, a lot of the not safe for work models, the Hermes and, and things like that. And then we have the ones that are like Ada and Curie and Babbage, where Curie's not in that. Curie's actually in the middle here, barely. But the really early models from four or five years ago. I would say that this free model is somewhere between that middle, maybe closer to the middle of the pack, and that upper level. And the reason I say that is because this is free. This is, and even when it does cost something, it's going to be so low cost because it's small. Okay. Seven. B means 7 billion parameters, means the galaxy of stars inside is only 7 billion pieces. That means it's going to, this is, I think, what's going to start opening these doors for these personal AIs that we train and that we have on our computers, just like we have our own specialized software and everything. I think it's going to be a couple of years before we get there, but I think this is like the start of it. And the fact that they're already um, hard coding this thing to be a two-stepper of think about the task and then do the task. I'm really excited for the future and I'll be keeping a really close eye on what Mistral is doing. If you're watching at home and you don't quite have access to Rexy yet or you haven't decided to join the FFA, you can do a lot of these prompts in different playground tools that are out there. We do have the ability, we do have open enrollment right now with the Future Fiction Academy and the link is in the description. I would love to see you in lab. We, have, we offer labs eight times a week. So what we just did today in the lab, or in the live, imagine you get those all recorded on everything, on all kinds of aspects of AI. You can come live and ask questions live and get on mic and everything like that. And then we also have a Discord community that really supports and lifts everyone up on what their business goals are for AI in publishing. Future Fiction Academy, we are just, we just want to stay on the cutting edge. So I want to live life like my new hair. <laughs> just be super forward.